Yes, some of you are quite young, I know. You don't feel it. But as you get older, it's amazing how much you get more and more troubled by the stuff that you've built up in your back story. I remember once reading a forward to one of the Gospels that had been written by Bono. You know Bono, that ancient pop singer? Yeah. And he said that when he was a young man, he read stories about people like King David, who was a pretty bit of a bastard, basically. And he said, why is God offering him favour when he does so much wrong? He said, now I've reached pretty much old age. I'm so glad that God liked David, because I knew with a chance. <laughs> Christ comes, says Paul, to set us free from the fear of death. He comes to set us free from the fear of crime. He comes to set us free from the burden of always thinking we have to get anything wrong. You have, says Paul, been set free by being brought into this community of faith in Jesus Christ. And that's worth thinking about today because we are here in part at least to celebrate bringing Elsie into that community of faith. Yes, I have been to do that. We're going to say today a welcome to Elsie and say she's part of this group of people who are being set free by Jesus Christ. And if you're set free, says Paul, then you are set free to make a decision. And it's a decision basically on how to live. You can, he says, live according to the flesh or according to the spirit. And as soon as I say something like that, you're thinking, oh yes, you can live according to your physical appetites or according to your better nature. No, he doesn't mean that at all. When he uses that word flesh, he's not just talking about the sins of the flesh. He's talking about your normal human natural life. What is it that as a normal human being you really want? Biologists will tell us that basically you want food, you want shelter, you want safety, and you want to reproduce. And that pretty much sums up the whole of human life. In fact, when I was a biologist doing my biology A level many, many years ago, one of my friends got so fed up because day by day we were learning the life cycle of algae, the life cycle of flowering plants, the life cycle of flea. And he said, what's the point of these living life cycles? And the biology teacher said, you have to ask your RE teacher about that. I just do life cycles. <laughs> the RE teacher told me, he said, well actually, there's a lot more to life than that. There is the life of the spirit. Which isn't your internal spirit, it's not your good side. Not your deciding to go for the light rather than the dark. The spirit that Paul is talking about is the spirit of God. The presence of God in your life. When we invite Elsie to be a part of our Christian community, we are inviting her to be a person within whom the presence and the power of God dwells. And so what Paul is saying is you can carry on being a food, shelter, reproduction, safety kind of person. And that has all kinds of things that go with it, you know, family life and all the rest of it. Can't be. Or you can be a person who lets God get into their skin. And the person who lets God get into their skin is someone whose life is transformed. It's a life which brings forth a totally different crop of fruits. The person who says who's just the person into biology, it's quite likely to end up drifting into envy and quarrelling and licentiousness and all these other things because they're about what you want. But life is about more than what you want. Life is about what is right. Life is about what is true. And if we're going to live by them, we're going to need the help of that God who gets under our skin. We're going to live as Paul wants it, according to the Spirit and not just the flesh. And the fruit of the Spirit, he says, is a different kind of crop altogether. It's 
It's about love and peace and patience and long suffering. It's not that the other things aren't important, of course they are. We want safety, we want security. Many of us want to have a family we care for. But we are also called to be people who look beyond that. And look ultimately in the light of God's love to the world we live. We want peace. We want long suffering. We want tolerance. We want patience and kindness and compassion. We want to look at our neighbour and desire the best for them and ask that they desire the best for us as well. When we invite Elsie to be a part of that community of faith, we are saying we are going to bring her up in a way that invites God to get under her skin and begin to grow those virtues that without God are so hard to pull up. More even than that, of course, this is not just about me being a nice person with the help of God. It's about us being people who, with the help of God, mm -hmm. seek to bring those virtues, those qualities, into the life of the world in which we live. To be someone who follows Jesus is to be someone who often sets out on a rocky road. Jesus, we heard in our Gospel reading, challenged his followers to put God first and to accept it does not make for a comfortable life. Don't be held back by your own past, he says. Head out into the future and powered by that Spirit of God who gets under your skin and changes your life. And be a person whose words bring peace and love and kindness to others. Be a person whose acts show the qualities of God to others. Be a person who challenges those who live only according to the flesh. Those who look only for short-term profit. Those who look only for the pleasure of the moment. Those who look only for the next election result or whatever. Be instead people who in the spirit of God look for love, peace, patience, kindness, forbearance. Be the kind of people who you can only be in the power of God. Today, we will, in just a few moments, hear Elsie's parents and godparents say, yes, we're turning to Christ and we're taking this stuff on board and we're going to bring the roof on that. But for all of us who have been baptized, all of us who have come in contact with the community of faith, it's a time to remember that we have been brought into this family of God, which is called to live by the Spirit, and in our daily walk, produce those fruits of the Spirit, those virtues which transform our own power from the world in which we live. Today, we accept Elsie into a community which is called to know God, to be transformed by God, and in the power of God, to bring transformation to the world. It's no small calling. It's no small calling to be a godparent or a parent whose job it is to make sure she's brought up that way. But if we do our job well, if we truly do truly introduce her to the God who comes to us in the power of the Spirit, that indeed she too will join a community which is called to be a powerhouse of good things and a transforming power for the world which less makes it needs an automatic transformation. Let's turn towards that now. Right, so I'd like to ask Elsie to bring her parents and godparents around here. And the rest of us are on page four in our service book. Oh, and when you come up, don't forget your service book. People of God, will you welcome Elsie and uphold her in her new life in Christ?
In baptism, Elsie begins the journey of faith. Parents are your parents. You speak for her today. Will you care for her and help her take her place within the life and worship of Christ Church? I have a definite opinion. <laughs> <laughs> in baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. Therefore, I ask, do you reject evil? I reject evil. And all its many forms. And all its many forms. And all its empty promises. And all its empty promises. Do you turn to Christ? I turn to Christ. And put your trust in him. And put my trust in him. And promise to follow him forever. And promise to follow him forever. I'm going to make the sign of the cross on Elsie's forehead. If any of you would like to do the same, please do. Elsie, I sign you with the cross. The sign of the cross. Do not be ashamed of Christ, you are his forever. Stand bravely with him, oppose the power of evil, and remain in space of sight to the end of your life. May Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness, restore in you the image of his glory, and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ was baptised in the River Jordan, we thank you for the gift of water to cleanse us and revive us. Saving God, give us life. We thank you that through the waters of the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the Promised Land. Saving God, give us life. We thank you that through the deep waters of death, you brought your Son and raised him to life in triumph. Saving God, Give us life. Bless this water, that your servant Elsie, who is washed in it, may be made one with Christ in his death and in his resurrection, to be cleansed and delivered from all sin. Saving God, give us life. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. Bring her to new birth in the household of faith, and raise her with Christ to full and eternal life, for all might, majesty, and authority and power are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess, together with this candidate, the faith of the Church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We, we believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our we faith. Say hi to Elsie, folks. Hi, Elsie. <laughs> Praise God for Elsie's baptism. Hallelujah. May God, who has received you by baptism into his church, Pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. 
There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Elsie, by one spirit, we are all baptised into one body. We welcome you to the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same heavenly Father. We are So now I'm going to sing on this hymn. It's number 251.
turn the back to page 10 in our service books. At the bottom of the page we give thanks to God for his gift. We say together, Yours Lord, Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, and the wonder, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All and things from God. God. And of your, your own to we give you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks. Because by baptism in water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a holy people in Jesus Christ our Lord. You raise us a new life in us. You renew your image in us. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit the broken bread and wine out poor may be for us his body and his blood. On the night before he died, he had a meal with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took a, sip, a cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Gather us in your loving God and bring us with all your people to be with you forever at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Do be seated for the Lord's prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Forgive us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please be seated. Or let's let Elsie and her close supporters, Ryan White, to come out and join us again. At the start of the service, we drew attention to the candle here, which represents the light of Christ. That light which the beginning of John's Gospel tells us shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot extinguish it. And so we take a light from that and we present it to us as a sign that she is drawn to that light and is to be a light bearer in her life. Who will let that hold it on the candle to the light of candle? <laughs> to us, you have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as the light of the world to the glory of God. You give presents at uh, baptism, don't you? Has anyone got her a silver spoon? <laughs> Good. But we have got her a children's Bible with stories to read as she grows a little bit later, or older, and a baptism certificate so that if anyone wants to get ordained or married in a Catholic church, but, uh, then uh, we've got that. Go in the light and peace of Christ. Oh, and peace of God. God. 